So, um, just to start off, um, have you always lived in Cobb County? No, have not. Um, tell me how your family ended up here. We came from Florida. We lived in Florida for eight years, and my husband was transferred here in 1995 okay. to a different job. Was there a reason other than that that you decided to move to Cobb County in particular? We have family that live in the state of North Carolina and wanted to be closer to them than Florida, so that's why we chose Georgia. And then Cobb County, uh, the job that my husband was going to take was in Cobb County. And then the second step for that was choosing a home. And the home was based on school system and based on scores of all the schools. And that's why we chose Cobb. Gotcha. Is that also a factor in the fact that you're a teacher for Cobb County? Yes. I prefer to teach for Cobb because of their record over the previous years before I started teaching and now of course I've been here too long to move anywhere else. How long have you been teaching? So I've been in Cobb for fi- this is my 15th year. Gotcha. In ha- Cobb. Have you always taught environmental science? No. What else did you teach? I taught in Cobb. I te- well, you know I teach biology mm-hmm. and before that I taught um, physical science mm-hmm. and that's pretty much it but I've taught all levels of biology and physical science. Gotcha. For, um, I guess, your college degree, what did you study in college? My college degree was, I had a concentration in biology, and my degree is actually a teaching degree, so it's a Bachelor of Science in Science Teaching. And um, what kind of, uh, what's your type of home ownership? Are you an owner, a home owner? Yes, okay. we're homeowners. And what kind of um, structure do you live in? Like a house, an apartment kind of thing? or We have a house that's actually three stories. It's a basement and two full levels. Okay. And it's brick and part brick and part siding. Is it a single family house? Yes, single family house. Okay. So um, what would you, how would you describe your relationship with the environment in general? Well, although I teach environmental science, I feel like my relationship with the environment is about average because um, when you have a home as large as what we have um, in this area, I tend, you tend to be a larger consumer than what you realize and what I would like to be. So I do, I mean, I'm, I'm very environmentally conscious I just don't have everything in place at my current home that I would love to have to make my home the most energy efficient. Can you tell me a little bit more about, you said you didn't have everything that you'd like to have. Could you tell me more about what those things might be? I had unlimited funds and could do anything that I wanted to do. I would probably move to a different home and just start all over again, but in the home that I'm in, I would put in all new windows with low E glass. And I would also increase my um, insulation in my attic. Probably, they would probably add another 12 inches or so of insulation. That would be another thing I would do. Um, If I could have solar panels in my neighborhood, I would very much consider having at least one. So, um, because I think my home would be a good candidate for that as far as the location of our home and how our home faces and that sort of thing. So those would be the first, the big things I would do. Okay. I've changed out air conditioning systems to be more energy efficient and that's been very helpful already. So you mentioned that uh, you would install solar, but does that mean you don't have it right now? Is that correct? I don't. Okay. So could you tell me a little bit about why you decided, uh, why you don't have rooftop solar? Uh, Well, actually in my neighborhood, um, I'm pretty sure that my covenants don't actually allow for that. Okay. Uh, But I'm sure that, that the Homeowners Association could be persuaded but there would be restrictions on where the panels could actually be. I think they could not face the street, I think would be the restriction. So, and that and just um, financial. Gotcha. They're, they're pretty expensive. So they wouldn't want it showing like, outwardly right. to the no, street. they would not want them showing. So you feel that the decision to have solar power was uh, not necessarily yours, but because of the homeowners association? Right. 
Gotcha. Right. Was that decision consciously made? Like, had you considered it before? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. I have considered it. And there's also an option to have an air conditioning unit that comes with some solar panels. Some oh, okay. small solar panels. That's cool. That's interesting. I've never mm-hmm. heard that. There is. And that was a, and that's a cost issue. Okay. Um, it was much more, at the time we had to install the new air conditioner unit, the cost of that was more than what we really could afford at the time. So that, for us, was really the issue. I had looked at it before and had seen it and really wanted that unit, mm-hmm. but knew that when the moment came and I needed to have $3,000, I probably was not going to have $6,000. Do you see what I mean? Mm-hmm. That it was It's definitely a cost issue. Gotcha. So, luckily... Um, we're looking for non-economic barriers that people have towards solar. So if you think of ones like that, just like keep them in mind, because we're trying to find out what other issues do people have other than financial, like apart from financial stability, like what influences people to have solar or not have solar right. kind well, of thing. Well, I would think one thing that I was saying about the Homeowners Association, the reason that they don't want you to have them is it's an aesthetic Right. Issue. Um, and then all the homes don't look exactly the same. And that's kind of how my neighborhood approaches it. They want all the homes to look the same. Mm-hmm. Um, but hopefully that opinion is changing a little bit. Because obviously if you would see a home with solar panels, you would also know that they're putting more money into their home. Right. Than the person who does not have them. Right. Because it's not cheap to it's install. It's not cheap to install. Right. So I think the perception is changing a little bit. And hopefully my homeowners association would be able to be influenced. And I think they're more um, open to suggestions now than they were a few years ago because it's a whole entire new board in oh, my okay. neighborhood. So you think things could change right. potentially? Right, so I think things could very much change. But I do know that in the covenants, that's what it says. Gotcha. So it's just a different group of people that are there now. So if you had the option, would you put rooftop solar on your home? I think I might try it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, tell me why you would or would not want that. Well, um, I believe, as you probably know already because you had me in class, um, I believe that that's really one of the only ways that we'll ever not be totally dependent on fossil fuels is to have some alternative energy that we put into the grid every year. And having your own home with a solar panel would certainly give you would be a contribution that you could make because your roof is a very large surface area and um, you could potentially have multiple panels up there. Right. And I'm not sure the capacity of each panel because I haven't gone that far <laughs> to research that, but I know that that's, that would be a big, a big change in how much energy my home could actually produce versus using. Um, Would there be any reasons that you wouldn't want to have solar other than financial reasons? The only other um, concern that I personally have would be um, the structure of my roof and how strong and sound that underlying structure is. And then we do get a lot of storms in the area that do have high winds. So I'd be a little nervous about that because that is on top of my roof structure and if you had high winds you know because we get a lot of we we do get a lot of storms that move through that are um at you know when a hurricane's downgraded to a tropical storm we get those so that would be in my only other concern would be roof damage during a storm gotcha so do you think that um your spouse and all everyone else who lives in your house would be supportive of solar panels if you were to get them? Or would you run into obstacles there? I would run into some obstacles. Oh, uh, really? Because the f- worry about the damage mm-hmm. would be what my husband would tell you. Gotcha. Anything else? Other obstacles? No. Um, in general, what do you think the pros and cons of solar are, in your opinion? Well, the pros definitely would be that we have a large amount of sunlight year-round here in the area. Um, So you have a high solar capacity in this region, especially. So that would be the biggest pro. Um, You would um, decrease your electric bill overall. 
I'm not sure how many years it would take to get the payoff on that because I know that they are expensive. Um, the cons really would be that they are expensive and you don't always get the energy. That's true. You don't always, you can't always generate electricity from them, but you, you generate, a, I would think you would generate a large amount, um, at least like the way my, like I said, my roof is. And I don't have shade on my roof for a very long in the, cor in the course of the day. So, um, so, but one con would be in the areas that it could, your roof could easily be shaded because we do have large trees. And for instance, my trees around the back of my house, they are, they are large because the house, the neighborhood's 23 years old. So the trees are big. So they can shade, they will shade during part of the day. So those are really my only cons that I could, that I could see. Can you think of any pros and cons that uh, other people would think of in terms of themselves and uh, in Cobb at least, people from Cobb? Other than money. Other than yeah, other financial. than money. Um, like I said, some people would see as that it's, would say that it's not pretty. But that just depends. That's a very personal opinion on what you what you what you allow. I think personally, it looks very progressive. So, but that yeah, I don't know. Would be really any other things they would say. Okay. <laughs> so, so I'm gonna hand you this pen, okay. and I'm gonna hand you the map of the U.S. And what we're gonna do here is um, you're going to label on there. Where do you think people have the most rooftop solar energy on their homes? And label any words, too, that come to mind that you think uh, identify the area. It's really interesting to me to see this because so many people label it so many different ways. But, oh. like, you actually have the knowledge for it or more knowledge than, than normal people, like, regular people who don't teach <laughs> science. So it's just interesting to see. Anyway, um, what makes uh, the communities you chose so different from um, the people who live in Cobb, do you think? Oh, that live in Cobb? Yeah, like um, what makes the places you label different from people in Cobb? Okay, well, some of these, all the western states that I labeled, and I'm going to include Hawaii and Alaska in that also. Right. The western states just have more of an environmental focus, and they always have, because a lot of the environmental movement really started out west. So I think especially like California and Washington and um, Oregon, I'm, I labeled those because they just have more of an, they're more, they're more earth friendly, I'll, I'll, I'll say that, more environmentally focused uh, than we might be in Cobb. Um, so I think a lot of it has to do with the type of developments that are there and just what your focus is on in general. It's a very different lifestyle to live out west and they do focus more on the environment. We are very um, <laughs> egocentric here. I think in the East, we still think about ourselves more than we think about the country as a whole and um, the earth as a whole. So that's, that's kind of the difference. Even Alaska, I feel like they're more environmentally friendly than, than even we are because they live so close to the earth. And a lot of these people in Alaska don't have access to electricity like we do anyway. They don't have the... Um, they, they have to live off the grid, so as to speak, because that's just how they live. So they are going to be more, um, they're very isolated. So a lot of times they don't have access to um, electricity even like we do. So a lot of these people are going to have to have that if they want electricity. So that's part of why I, that's just really why I labeled it that way. Gotcha. Is there a reason I noticed you also kind of just labeled most of the border south? So well, is there a reason for that? Well, anything towards the south. Um, anything, the, everybody in this region, we get more sunlight uh, than anywhere else than further north. So the closer you are to the equator, the more direct exposure you have to the sun um, year round. And so I just went ahead and went with that. Gotcha. Thought. So just based on how, how much sun they would right. get. Gotcha. Right. Sun per amount, you know, sun that's available, you know, throughout the year. Were there any other factors that influenced your choice in those regions? Not no, really. not really. <laughs> Was there a reason you labeled that one state with nuclear? Um, they have more nuclear power 
in the U in the Southeast than anyone else. Georgia generates about 20% of their electricity from nuclear, and South Carolina generates, I think, 55 or 60% of their electricity through through nuclear. Most of the states have some amount of electricity from renewables, like solar, wind, um, and even biomass. But um, it, I just wrote that there for South Carolina. <laughs> gotcha. And when you have 55% electricity from nuclear, you're not out looking for alternative methods. It yeah. wouldn't be a big, it wouldn't be very, um, I don't think it would be very productive to, to try to have those folks to, to buy solar panels. Because I don't think they see the need for it as much as we do over here. Gotcha. Have you seen a lot of solar in Georgia since you labeled Georgia? I just label Georgia. I don't know why I label Georgia. I so haven't, haven't seen <laughs> haven't seen that much. No, really. No, there's more around, but it's more just small places. I mean, the major universities have some mm -hmm. solar definitely on them. Um, I don't. I don't know where I've seen it. Gotcha. But universities, coastal. No. We have a lot of farmland in South Georgia. That's true. Um, so most of us live, you know, up here. Yeah. The majority of the population lives up in this area, so maybe it's more down here. The north? So you <laughs> think there's more solar in the I'm, south? Georgia? There's probably more in the south than there is in the north, but gotcha. I'm so just guessing. Save that thought, actually, because we have a map oh, of no. Georgia. <laughs> So, no, you're really gonna test me to see if I I don't I don't know. You don't have to know. It's just based on your okay. thoughts. My thoughts. Okay. Based on your thoughts and your own reasoning, where do you think people would have the most solar adoption in Georgia? Just label the regions like wherever you think have more. Oh my goodness. Or the most. Right. So you labeled um, southern, like deep southern Georgia, and a little bit of the coast. And a little bit near some of those major university cities. Can you tell me a little bit about your reasoning for those things? Why you chose them? I don't know. Well, like I said, in the, I don't know about the farming areas. I know they have high solar potential, but I don't know how much they've invested down there. Um, and I do know that the, in the areas, in the, the larger areas, like in where there's major universities, I do know that we see more there. And I would think that, and I'm just guessing there because right. of education. And also, in the metro area, there's more wealth in the metro area. So, And the only reason I marked down in South Georgia was because of farmland. And then I marked some on the coast thinking, well, that might be <laughs> possible. Why the coast? Um, I was just thinking yeah. more exposure to sunlight. But gotcha. it's not necessarily... Right. This whole southern area is too. So, so um, what do you think makes the people from those different communities different from the people from our community? Well, I would. Most of these people would be very similar to our community um, because we live in a very wealthy area, and I think most most of these are fairly wealthy areas. Even like the Savannah area will be wealthy. South Georgia will be a little different because those are more rural. And they do have a lot of farms in those areas, but I do know a lot of times farmers will invest. So they may, because of the amount of land they have, have some solar. Um, now we're talking about individual homes, right? Mm -hmm. Not. Do you feel that people in the different communities that you labeled would have a different mindset than we would in terms of solar? Um, I think education would play a big role. That's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can you expand on that a little? Well, I think if you, if you're, most people um, who understand the energy and the, and the, that we use in the United States would be more educated. So they would probably realize that if everyone does a little bit, it will help. Um, and also with higher education, you're going to have a little. You're going to have a little bit more money financially. You'll be a little more stable and maybe be able to afford it. So, um, and I think education does help. Because um, if I didn't, I didn't. I wouldn't do what I do. But um, that's kind of what I was thinking about education. Gotcha. Did you label Cobb County there pretty much a little bit 
like that well, area. Well, pretty much, yeah. I should have said, it says it says Marietta, but yeah. Have you seen people in Cobb County with solar panels? Mm-hmm. There are some people around that have some pa- solar panels. Rooftops. Mm-hmm. Oh, really? There's a few. Mm-hmm. You should tell me where they are, because I need to interview some of those people. <laughs> um, if you know where they are, we can talk about that later. But um, you know, they show up on that project we were just talking about. Oh, really? Yeah, the kids fund. I didn't know that. There's a home out in this area that has some. Huh. Yeah, I didn't know that. I don't think that was there when I was there. I don't think that was... You might have changed it. It's I don't remember. It's pretty close. I'm thinking it's back. I think I could kind of tell you. Okay. You might could drive that road and... Yeah, maybe I'll it. just ring a doorbell and be like, hey. <laughs> well, they go take a picture at... There's one house that keeps showing up, but I need to actually find out where it is. Mm-hmm. But I think I kind of kind of know in a general area. Gotcha. Um, I don't think there's a lot. Yeah. I mean, I'll see him more, like I said, at a university. There's several. Like, Kennesaw State has them. Georgia Tech does. Georgia State. Mm-hmm. Do you know anyone who's close to you in Georgia who has solar panels? No. On their roof? No. no. Mm-mm. Um, why do you think that they do or don't? That they don't? Yeah. Um, honestly, in this area, mm-hmm. after 23 years... And only have had one person call me and present that to me. And that was the other week. And I thought it was related to you. Present what? Uh, Purchasing solar panels. Oh, okay. Interesting. It was like, I thought, well, that's odd. You had sent me this email. But then I thought there's there's no connection because she doesn't, she's not affiliated with a company. It's for class at college. Mm -hmm. So, isn't that odd? Yeah. So in 20 years of living here and living in the same home, no one has ever offered me that. Right. So I think uh, that, you know, maybe those companies are just now, I don't know, doing a promotional or, you know, coming into this area to see if people would be interested. So do you think that interest wasn't very big before for them to be coming here? Or do you think that people are always interested and they're just now getting the hint? I think people don't know very much about it. Okay. Because it's not like you can go next door and ask your next door neighbor. Right. What do you think? You know, where did you buy your solar panel? Well, there's nobody in my neighborhood who has one. But if I had one, people would probably stop and say, hey, how's that working out for you? Right. You know, it, if you had one in the neighborhood, mm-hmm. then you would generate some interest. Right. So it's just not commonplace enough for people. I think it's just not commonplace. Not quite yet. Do you think that people think about getting solar and don't because of some reason like that where they just don't know? They just don't know. And I haven't really seen a lot of companies that offered them. Um, when I went to look for the air conditioning unit, that they, that one of the... It's carrier air conditioning is who makes a unit that you can buy one to seven solar panels to go with it. Mm-hmm. Um, there were only, like, in Metro Atlanta, two companies who could install it. Oh, wow. So that became a limiting factor. It's like, well, okay, not only do I have, you know, it's not just anybody can install this. I have to have this company that's, you know affiliated with carrier and they can install the solar panel gotcha i guess that's kind of saying something so it's like, like there's just not yeah, they a lot have of to be people specially trained so gotcha and um do you think there's other factors like people that you know wouldn't want to adopt solar um other than other than financial, financial. um i think that people just don't have enough education about it don't know how it works and we don't know anyone we can talk to about how it works. Gotcha. Um, I think they would be... Also, like I said, maybe be afraid of what it might do to your roof and what's the structure like mm-hmm. and what, what requirements are needed for them to be installed. Do you know anyone personally who has strong opinions towards solar or are maybe particularly... Or against it? Yeah. Oh, for it? For it or yes. against well, it. I have... My niece and her husband have strong opinions for it. Gotcha. Oh, let me sh- I didn't mark them on the U.S. map. They are That's, right up Oh, go here. ahead. They're there. Gotcha. Do you know what they're, um, why that they're so for it? 
Um, that area. Okay, what's that area? Asheville, North Asheville, Carolina. North Carolina. They are a an eastern city that lives like a western city. Interesting. They um, are very eco friendly, environmentally friendly, energy conscious. So they, yeah. Have they always lived there, or have they ever lived they in Georgia? They lived out west. Oh, they lived out west they before. Moved. Interesting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you know anyone who is close to in Georgia who has strong opinions? Either way, pro or con? Maybe, yes. Have they expressed those opinions to you in Well, they're particular? four. Okay. Four. okay. I think they would be, they're four solar. They, and one person doesn't own a home, but she would very much be, is very much for solar power, but she doesn't own a home. She rents. And, uh, Do you think that's a barrier for her that she, because she's renting a home? Well, yes. But I think when she owns a home, I think she'll have a solar panel. Gotcha. And she lives downtown. Okay. So. Is that part of the area that you wanted to label there? Like downtown Atlanta as being progressive? I label Atlanta, yes. Gotcha. And also a lot of our young people are moving downtown. A lot of people in their 20s and 30s want to live downtown before they have kids or even after they've got kids. But they want to live downtown. So, and I think that group of people is more are more open to solar. Okay. What do you think about the general mindset that people have in Georgia in relation to solar or in relation to the environment? Do you think people are very environmentally conscious or no. not so much? Do you have any not specific really. examples of people who you know? People that throw away everything and that okay. create, generate a lot of waste, yes. Students um, or teachers uh, or both? Just mostly neighbors. Neighbors? Friends, okay. neighbors. Um, you know from experience that people, my students will generate less waste once they've had me. Oh, okay. But I think in general... Unless we are in a situation where we're made to think about this, we don't think about it. We're busy. We have really busy, full lives. And there are a lot of people, and we mostly think about ourselves. So unless we start thinking about it, we don't, we don't generally think about it that often. Gotcha. Do I think that's why we use too much energy and too much water and create too much waste. Mm-hmm. We just don't think about it. We don't take the time to think about it. Do you think there there are any other factors that influence solar adoption in the state? Yes and no. It's not going to take over the sector that's that's using fossil fuels, but it will change how much we use. It will it will slow it down. It will Mitigate decrease, it. De- decrease it a little bit. So um, I can't say that you know it won't completely take over and, and produce all the electricity we need. We still need some, but it will certainly save some fossil fuels so that we can stretch what we have for longer, a longer um, time period. Do you think that there are a lot of non-economic barriers for people in this state? Not really. Just the fact that they don't have knowledge? I think we, they don't have, don't have very much knowledge and they just haven't seen it a lot. Just they don't have a lot of experience with it. Gotcha. Okay, cool.